Good evening, everyone. So I'm not really sure if we need all of this power in this microphone because there's not a lot of us here, but we are going to be recording this for um, so everyone can see us at home too. So good evening. My name is Eva Andrade. I work for the mayor's office um, promoting the census. I am the census outreach coordinator for the city of Rockton. Thank you for being here tonight. I know that you know we take away time from your families and um, your, you know, things that you had to do. And you were here with us today, so I appreciate it. Um, we are trying to spread this word about the census, and the city of Rockton needs to hear us a little louder. I guess I'm not making enough noise by myself. So I need help, and this is the purpose of this meeting is, is um, to make this complete count, this committee bigger, so you guys leaders in the community can help spread the word of the census a little faster. So I have some people here from the Census Bureau tonight um, to help me do that and to uh, teach us or educate us on how we can efficiently share the census message with the residents of Brockton. So I am going to introduce uh, Philip Degatti, I hope I said that correctly, um, which, um, and Philip is going to talk to us a little bit more about how to share that census message. All right, so I'm going to walk us through a process that the Census Bureau is using to help communities um, think through the challenges that their community is going to face during the 2020 census and then come up with solutions to it. So it is a workshop that we use that is a form of ideation thinking. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to spend about 10 minutes, not even, quickly going over how that's gonna to work tonight. Um, and then Ray's gonna talk a little bit about census message and is gonna talk a little bit about some of the challenges that Brockton is facing specifically. Um, and then once we've done that, we're then going to go into the group workshop where we're gonna split the room in half or in thirds um, and discuss uh, the city of Brockton, discuss challenges in Brockton and come up with some solutions. And hopefully at the end of that process, our host will have some ideas for individuals to broaden the Brockton Complete Count Committee um, and then be able to use these tools in their next meeting. So that's kind of our goal. So the objectives of our workshop is to help communities build connections within the community in terms of organizations, individuals, ways of having a public voice to promote the census and to help bring the community together to overcome the, the low count that is expected here in the city. Um, in order to do that, what we're trying to do is build those connections and then take those connections um, and have them come up with creative ideas that will build momentum for the city to engage its residents in the process of coming up with a complete count. And then hopefully what will happen is, is that Brockton will have two things. A, it will have positive solutions for itself, and B, those solutions will be examples for other communities around the area who are facing similar yet unique to themselves challenges in achieving a complete count. So in order to do this effectively, you need to approach it from the mindset of what is your role in this community? Um, are you an official? Are you a leader? Are you um, part of a, a nonprofit? Are you part of a business? What voice do you have? What influence do you have? What do others see you as being a part of this community? Because you're going to be tapping into that identity for yourself in order to be able to help the city during this challenge. So that's kind of hard to read, so I'm going to make it easier by just walking you through it. Um, what an ideation workshop is, it's design thinking. Um, so the way this is going to work, we're t on the right here, we're starting at the very top of that circle. The first thing that we do is we empathize with the problem. So the question is, you know, we know that some people are not going to respond in, Brock in Brockton. Why? Why are they not going to? Well, they obviously have a reason not to. It could be fear. It could be confusion. It could be lack of information. It could be apathy. It could be distrust. The, the list goes on and on and on. So the first step of this is identifying with the individual who is hard to count. 
then we move clockwise, and the second step to this is defining why they are hard to count. So we know person X is the hard to count. Now we're saying here's the reason why they are the hard to count. All solutions have to respond to both. They have to respond to the reason that they're hard to count, but you can't solve that problem unless you are putting that solution into their hands. So their community, their understanding of who they are, their understanding of the city that they live in. So you have to come at this from that perspective. If you do that and you succeed, then we have solutions. That's what the ideation period is in this. So now that we know who's hard to count, and now we know why they're hard to count, we're now asking, well, what's the solution? How can we fix that? By approaching it from this mindset, we come up with really useful tools to um, increase the turnout in the count for the city. And then continuing around, we are not going to do the prototype because there's no time for that. The prototyping option is where you come, where you put like a working idea of those solutions together, and then you you try implementing it either hypothetically or for real, um, and then you look at it, and then you 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 iterate it, meaning you um, go back, you adjust it, and then you repeat it. We're not going to do that part because we don't have the time to do that part. We're going to bring ourselves to solutions that we can all implement, and then we're going to go out and implement them and see how successful we can be. Uh, so a couple principles that we are going to be working with. Um, the first one is avoiding groupthink. One of the worst things that happens when you're trying to solve this problem is when everybody starts thinking as one mind. Um, groupthink does not solve the problem because the problem is multi-personality, multi-faceted, multi-cultured, multi-aged, multi, put whatever descriptor you want there. If we're all thinking about it as one group mind, then we're not taking advantage of the diversity of the city's leadership and the, its involved community. So we really do want to avoid that. Um, we want parallel solutions, so something that she can be working on and he can be working on simultaneously as opposed to serial because serial solutions are very delicate, like links in a chain, if any one link breaks, the whole thing fails. Parallel, if one of those ideas fails, then all the others keep going. So we're going to be looking for solutions that can be symbiotic, but are going to work without each other. That way, if something doesn't work or if something fails, then the city is not at a loss. We're still uh, benefiting from the efforts here tonight and from the Complete Count Committee going forward. Um, and the, 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 the magic of time constraint, I don't buy this one at all. Um, I'll be totally honest. Um, but there is some value to it. The idea of time constraint is, is that if you put somebody within bookends of time, that they'll, they'll get more done and they'll think faster. Um, I come from a career field where that's not the case. In my previous life, I was an academic. We don't know how to keep to a time limit no matter what we do. Um, fortunately for you, I have colleagues here who will make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, and then, in terms of things that I want you to keep in mind, please do not limit your ideas or your solutions to what you think is possible. That's what blue skying it means. If you think there's a good idea but you don't think it's possible, air it anyways. Because here's the fun part of tonight. Um, we may not have all the solutions in the room but there may be solutions somewhere else. And his idea may be something that he can't implement but maybe she can. So don't limit yourself to what you think is possible because even if it's not in the end completely possible, at least maybe some portion of it is. So think big, that's perfectly fine for us. Um, we're gonna do diverge, converge, we're gonna think on our own, we're gonna think in small groups, and then we're gonna think as one large group. Um, so the ideas will come from a non-group think concept and we'll slowly get merged together um, until we finish. So we're not going to use a challenge statement. Um, we're going to let everyone who's here kind of come up with their own ideas of what the challenges are here in Brockton. Um, and then moving forward, members of the Complete Count Committee should do that as well. Start thinking about it from what they believe is the challenge, because then you're responding to multiple instead of one focused idea. So. This is the first step, and, I, and you know, while I'm walking through this, I'd like you to start thinking about this right now. 
um, your persona tonight is going to be the person who's hard to count. Um, so who is that person in Brockton? So take a moment and think for yourself, who in your community is going to get the letter about the census in a couple weeks and is not going to take action on it? What is that person's demographic? What is their characteristics? What are their attitudes? Attitudes towards this community, attitudes towards the federal government, attitudes towards filling out surveys, attitudes towards anything that qualifies as a reason that that persona would not want to respond. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So start thinking of who you think that is in Brockton. Feel free to think of more than one. Uh, I think you might find that several people here will think about the same couple. Um, and what will happen is, is we'll likely focus on those ones that are um, common in the room. So then, once we've done that, so once I finish talking and Ray finishes talking, we'll take a few minutes for you to, to think through that and focus on it. Then our next step is going to be this solo, ide solo ideation. So we got a bunch of uh, post-it notes and we got some pens. We're going to pass them around shortly. Um, and you know, what we'll do is, you know, with your persona in mind, what are ideas for the reason that person's hard to count and what's a simple solution or a not so simple solution to solving that problem. Take a sticky note, just write one idea on it, stick it on a chair next to you, and then just keep going. And what you're gonna see is you're gonna have a, a large array of ideas, but you're also gonna have some congruency to them. Um, because what will happen is, is you're gonna make logical groupings. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cluster them. Um, so you'll be in smaller groups. You're going to take all of your ideas, all of somebody else's ideas, and see what similarities there are. You know, maybe you both decided that the senior center is a solution to the problem, or maybe a school is a solution. Some person might have thought a school, someone might have thought an after-school program, so those go together logically. Um, so we're going to try to make logical groupings of them to see of the people in that group what is, where are they seeing the most likely solution for the problem here in Brockton? Um, and then what will happen is, is either by formally voting, um, and that's, so uh, some of the ways we do this, we walk through it step by step. I like doing the whole thing because I think it's valuable for you to see what the ending is going to be right at the beginning. Um, so you can actually do this voting method if you want. If your group can come to an agreement by um, consensus and just discussing it, um, you'll pick one of those clusters, one of those areas that um, you all want to focus on, um, and then that will be your next step. So at that point, you'll have who is hard to count, why are they hard to count, and this is the pool of ideas that we're going to solve that problem with. Once you've done that, we're gonna flesh the ideas out. You're gonna find that some of those ideas are not gonna work. You're gonna find that some of those ideas will work but have problems. You're gonna find that some of those ideas are solutions to the problems the other ideas have. This is the beginning of the solution. So by going through this fleshing out period, we start identifying steps within the solution so that we can create a healthier outcome for the Complete Count Committee to implement. So just like an example, um, how are people going to find out about your solution? Um, so I, d I ran one of these in Northampton and in Northampton one of the ideas was to get um, a bunch of different uh, venues to host a enumeration in the city and just get all of these uh, places. So one was a restaurant that was in the room, one was the senior center, one was the library, one was town hall, a church offered to stay open, open its doors that night to help. Um, the idea was if you had, if you saturated the market um, so that 
anybody in that town could just walk out the door and be not far from a census response location where they could get answers to their questions, they could get help if they needed it, and they could respond, then their count would be higher. It was a brilliant idea. They had one tiny problem. How are they going to get people to show up? Because if they're not listening to the, hey, do this at home, why are they going to listen to the, hey, come here and do it? Because that takes more effort. Um, and yeah, so that was where this guiding question things come from. Their solution, by the way, was to attach to every single location an organization's uh, meeting or program. So every organization that was in the room was going to host their whatever that week at a location where the census thing was going to take place, so all their members would be there anyways. And then they were going to blast emails out to their membership and say, this is a really important fill-in-the-blank meeting, social, whatever, um, and basically trick people into showing up and then have them do their census. Uh, it was an adorable idea. Um, but, yeah, but that's what this stage is about. It's about identifying what are the challenges and how do you overcome them. Um, a similar one of these wanted to do um, for, they recognized that seniors were the biggest issue, making sure that they responded, and they wanted to set up events for senior citizens to respond, but the issue was is how are you going to get them from there to the event? Um, and so the entire workshop turned into a conversation on how to get transportation for individuals. Um, everything from uh, the, the city providing city vans to um, local organizations and churches, um, pulling out that whole drive people to the polls campaign that they do during election years and just getting those drivers to drive for the census instead. Um, the police department had said that they could bring in some extra off-duty officers to assist if there's safety issues with people getting from point A to point B. So it became an all-hands-on-deck for the city of how do you get the population there, not so much how you message them. So that's what this group and guiding questions portion of the fleshing out is supposed to accomplish. We're not going to develop a storyboard. That's when you have a much larger room and you want to draw out what your solution is. So if you ever want to do this with like 100 people, um, you post up pictures of, of what it looks like so that people can walk around the room and understand your idea without actually um, having to hear your explanation. And then this is, this is where like the real magic of the evening is going to come from. Each group's going to share out their idea to everyone else and invite criticisms of like where do you see shortfalls in this but also invite solutions what can who do you know what organization do you can you think of that would help out um, and you know this is where we get to the part of the evening that I find the most entertaining um, you know so you have an idea you have a plan you need to implement it you don't have all the pieces for that implementation here in the room so what else is there what organizations are you a part of that aren't present tonight? What individuals do you know have a voice, have a solution, have some kind of infrastructure that would make your solution even better? Um, and then we have contribution forms that we're gonna ask you to fill out. So fill them out for yourself if you have an idea that your organization can do, because what will happen is, is that our census team here covering the city of Brockton will then contact you about how we can support you in supporting the city. So the fun part for me at least is you can also fill those out for people who aren't here. So that's the throwing under the bus step. So if there's a solution that you think somebody else can, you can fill their name out, fill their contact information out, fill their org out, give it to us. I'll make sure Pedro calls them. Um, and yeah, let us know if you don't want them to know you sent us that's okay. Um, it helps if we can say you were recommended by. But you know, so the outcome of this is not only do we have a solution for the city, but then the Bureau has an opportunity to create new partners in the city to help with this effort. And then the Complete Count Committee has all of those resources to assist in making a complete count. So that's kind of our goal. That's the contribution sheet, if you're curious. Um, so that's what we'll pass out as we come up with solutions, um, just so that we can make a note of them and then we can help follow up. Because the goal here is for you guys to have solutions that the Census Bureau can partner with you to ensure a complete count.
of the city. Um, so that's my portion of the spiel. Um, so I'm going to pass this over to Ray, who's going to go over um, a little bit about the census in general and then talk about some of the challenges here to kick off the night. Thank you, Philip. So I'm going to give just a quick overview and a quick uh, Census 101. As I'm talking, think about Philip's presentation, what he's asked you to think about tonight, and think about, as I'm talking, how this how we can put a plan in action for Brockton specifically. So the census is a, a massive national endeavor. It's the largest US peacetime mobilization effort that the US government will do. But the way we conquer this and the way we approach it is by hyper-localizing it down to the city and town level, down to the census tract level. And that's what we're hoping to get here tonight from all of you, and we thank you very much for your participation. So the Census Bureau is the largest statistical agency in the US. We conduct over 130 surveys and programs throughout the decade, but the decennial census happens once every 10 years, as written in Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution, that we count every person residing in the United States where they live and sleep most of the time. And the key to a successful census is to count everybody once, only once, and in the right place. So the three most important things I'd like you to take away from tonight is that the census is safe, the census is easy, and the census is important. Let's talk about why it's important first. And as we're talking about why it's important to find the hard to count communities within Brockton and the surrounding area, it's important because this determines how many members we will get in the US House of Representatives. Uh, and that is based on population from the decennial census that happens once every 10 years since 1790. We reallocate our, uh, we reapportion members of Congress. But it's also how we access $675 billion in federal funding to each, uh, to cities and towns, to states, uh, based on population data from the decennial census. These are programs like Medicare and Medicaid. These are programs like highway and infrastructure funding. These are programs for hospitals and first responders. These are critical programs that affect our everyday lives. Um, SNAP, WIC, um, TANF all receive federal funding. So these are things to think about and why it's important to respond and why it's important that every single person respond. If you have a school and there's 100 students going to that school and 20 kids, 20 kids' families don't include them on the count, your school is at 80% funding for the next 10 years. This number does not change for 10 years, so it's very critical we get the accurate number this time. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more about that part while we're talking about why the census is important. There are some groups that statistically are hard to count. Children under five are the fastest growing undercounted population in the country. It's very important that when we're messaging these things, we're talking about making sure people include their children. Uh, whether you're one day or whether you're 18 years old, people include their children on the form if they are living at that house. Foreign born tend to be difficult uh, to count. There are uh, trust issues. There can be language barriers. Um, there can be just informational barriers. We want to work on finding solutions to fix those problems and solve those problems and get through to those communities. Um, renters tend to be a very difficult population to count. Uh, it's just, you know, people are mobile, highly mobile. They move frequently throughout the year. Uh, it tends to be something that's difficult to do. Uh, and then people that speak a language other than English at home. And that tends to be, you know, we're hoping we have, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but our language program is um, pretty uh, robust. We have, you can fill out the census online or by phone in 13 non uh, 12 non-English languages, 13 total. And then we have language uh, video and print guides in 56 additional languages online. Um, so we're hoping that this will help, but we're also hiring, hiring uh, language specialists throughout. And uh, I have my colleague from recruiting in the back, so if anybody's interested in taking some flyers or applying for a job yourself, please do. So next I'll move on to why the census is safe, which is kind of one of the most important messages i found in this area. Uh, it helps put people at ease. The census is safe. We will never share information that would identify the personal information of an individual or a household with any government agency, any court, at the federal, state, or local level. And obviously we're not allowed to disclose it to the public either. Every person that works for the census is sworn to an oath of confidentiality that we will not disclose your information uh, and to do so would be punishable by five years in prison or $250,000 fine. 
Um, this has been held up through challenges. It's not to say other government agencies wouldn't like to access personally identifiable information from the Census Bureau, but the Census Bureau has uh, taken them to court each time and won each time. So Title 13, put in place in the 1950s, is strong, and there has not been a data breach uh, since it was put in place. Uh, it's also the first time we're going online with the Census, so cybersecurity is an issue. We need to make sure our systems are safe and secure. Uh, the Census Bureau uses a redundant and resilient system and only uses our internal servers. Uh, our enumerators at the door have encrypted materials, um, so when, uh, sorry, encrypted resources, so when they take a census survey, it's automatically encrypted and sent behind a firewall. So your census responses are safe uh, and secure, and every person that works for the census takes an oath to make sure that that's the case. And finally, the census is easy. There are four ways to respond to the census. Online, by phone, by mail, anybody that wants to fill out the census in 2020 by mail will still be given that opportunity, and then in person with a census taker. So let's talk about the first uh, two options. On March 12th, so just a few weeks away, everyone will be, uh, every household in the country will be given that first mailing of how to fill out an invitation to respond to the census. This invitation for about 80% of the country will be how to respond online or by phone. Um, with the website and telephone numbers for different languages. When you go online or by phone, you fill out the census for everybody in your household, and everybody will get a reminder uh, a few days after March 12th, and then if, at that point, if you haven't responded, we'll start to send additional mailings. Uh, a postcard will come at the start of April, the paper form will come April 8th, and then two more reminders before the end of our self-response window uh, at the end of April. You can self-respond online by phone or by mail at any point from the start of the census March 12th until uh, basically the end of the census, which will be in the end of July. Um, but we will start non-response follow-up when we start sending census takers to your door uh, at the end of April and the start of May. Um, that tends to be for, that's uh, the most expensive part of the census. It's why we're trying to promote self-response. Uh, also, self-response is the highest quality data that we get at the Census Bureau, um, so we really want to encourage self-response. Uh, it also helps interactions with people that might be afraid to open their door when they get a knock. The easiest way to avoid a knock on the door from a federal employee during census time is to self-respond to the census. So these are some of the issues that we want to talk about, why the census is safe, easy, and important, how we can deliver these messages to our communities, uh, and we want you to help us find Brockton-specific solutions to these Brockton-specific problems that we see. Um, if you have any other questions throughout the night, Pedro, myself, my colleague Philip will be here to answer any questions you have. If you have any specific questions about the census, I'm happy to answer them now. Um, otherwise, let's get to work. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Thompson. I'm the Ward 5 City Councilor. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Thank you, uh, uh, um, Phil, Pedro, Iva, Raymond, um, this is more important, uh, the most important thing our city has going on right now. Um, so thank you all for appearing. Uh, so we put together in our, our group um, a few different people, a few different uh, characteristics uh, that we think is common uh, throughout Brockton. Um, and, and the one that I'm really gonna really focus on is the apathetic, are, are those who could care less Right, those who um, really feel they don't have skin in the game, um, those who don't understand or uninformed about how it affects them. Um, so the, some of the solutions that we were talking about is, is to make it personal, is that uh, most, uh, the, the apathetic don't know how this benefits them. So if we can make it personal to every individual, um, we were given out a, uh, a, um, a flyer from, I believe it's the uh, Secretary of State's office maybe, and what it does is kind of lists out the different programs that, the, that are funded through the census results. And these are things that I had no idea about. Um, Meals on Wheels, um, I left the list over there so I don't have it in front of me, but I think it was a, a pretty enumerated list. So I think what we could do is to anybody who's in front of us, 
we can probably point out five, six, seven programs that um, they themselves might use or some close family member uh, might use. And I think if they realize that by filling out this census, they're gonna receive a direct benefit, I think they'll be more motivated uh, to fill it out. And so um, another thing that we talked about are the fearful. Uh, those who um, are afraid to fill it out because they believe the, the information is not safe and secure. Um, again, Brockton has, um, is, a, is a multicultural city. We have people from all around the world uh, in our city. And unfortunately, a lot of the countries that they come from have governments that, that are not friendly, that are um, you know, authoritarian, and, and, and that's why they made their way to Brockton. And so I think there's just maybe a level of mistrust um, that a lot of different cultures have with um, raising their hand and saying, yes, government, I'm here. So I think what's important is to point out that the census is safe. That um, I think, Phil, uh, excuse me, uh, Raymond, you pointed out that there's never been a breach and that um, it, there are consequences for information um, being leaked. And it's never happened, but um, they, they, they have a, a pretty hard stick if it does happen. I believe there are multiple lawsuits uh, that were filed um, preventing different government agencies from accessing uh, census data and um, every single action preventing the release of this data has been successful. So um, the information's secure. And I think if we can put that out there, that, it, that it's safe, that your information's not gonna get out there, combined with this is how it personally benefits you, I, I think we'll be, uh, will do well in our percentages. Another thing that we were talking about is access. Um, let's say uh, in the Ward 5, I can see immediately Caffrey Towers. Caffrey Towers is one of our, um, our federal buildings uh, in, in the ward. I think we have over 1,200 residents at Caffrey Tower uh, with a good portion of them who are handicapped or disabled. Um, and, and don't have ready access to a computer or um, access to get to some place that has a computer. So in, in a lot of these communities, we're gonna have to get to them. And so I understand we have uh, mobile, um, you know, mobile, questionnaire. mobile questionnaire assistance. Um, and so get into their home, get uh, at Caffrey Towers specifically, get down into their, um, their meeting room, uh, call them down, have them fill it out. It's a 10 minute, uh, 10 minute time frame to fill this out and getting those people counted is gonna go a long way to getting uh, Brockton an accurate and fair account. Um, and so we gotta work hard. This gotta be on all community leaders' minds from here until the end of this process. Um, we need to talk about it at the bar, at the restaurant, at the house, at school. This has to be, um, you know, something that we're constantly preaching um, throughout this whole process. And I think I am confident with the help of Pedro, with Iva, um, Raymond, and Phil, you're welcome out here anytime. Uh, I, I believe with the help of the people that are um, in charge of the census in this area who uh, are energetic and intelligent and able to communicate this information, I think Broughton's gonna do just fine. I think we're gonna hit our 100,000 person mark and um, that's gonna be a huge benefit to our, our schools, our hospitals, our public works, our seniors. And so uh, we're gonna keep working, I'm gonna keep working. You're gonna hear from me all the time about this and um, I, I hope to um, I hope to hear back from you uh, with um, some solutions on your own. Um, we're gonna need to hear from you. Um, you know, my grandmother needs help. Uh, my, my brother doesn't understand. So those who are uh, leaders in their own household um, or, or neighborhood leaders, uh, let us know and we will be knocking on your door and, uh, and, and we're gonna help count you because you matter. Great, thank you.
enough for a room. All right, so this group was really the we got two circles that we're looking at is the, the, the group that's just apathetic about society, period, culture, government, whatever, doesn't engage. And then, you know, it sounded like a, a minority undocumented group is, is the second side of that coin that we're trying to uh, work on. And the, and the group's idea is to over message it, basically get as much messaging out to it. So the question is, is what is going to be the challenges for that to be successful? Um, and what can we do to facilitate that? Um, so does anybody have any thoughts, ideas? We'll get, so let All right, so if they're going to be apathetic about the census, they're probably going to be apathetic about the normal channels of communication of government, is what you're saying. All right, so then here's the question. Where do we find them? So what kind of partners do we need to find here in Brockton that will be able to message them? Because if they're not going to listen to the city council, they're not going to listen to the mayor's office, they're not going to listen to the state or federal government, who are they going to listen to? Church leaders. OK, so we need to get the churches to say it. Who else? The Council on Aging. You get a little bit more engaged. So what you said earlier, the bars. Okay. So here's going to be. All right. So then here's the next piece to that challenge. So. So what we're doing is we're walking there. So we've got, all right, so we know who's hard to count. We know where we can find them. We can find them in the churches and the community organizations. We can find them in the restaurants and the bars. Um, if Brockton is like any other community I've dealt with, the churches don't have the money for this. Um, and the restaurants and the bars might need some motivation. So how do we get, what is the, what will be the next step here in Brockton? What, what, can we think of that could help the churches, that could help um, essentially the, um, the food industry is where you're going with it. Yeah. We're walking towards yours, so why don't we have you, um, which one of you wants to be the spokesman? Okay, so you're gonna come up here? Yeah. All right. Good evening, my name is Gwen Knowles and I'm, I'm an over 50 year resident of the city of Brockton. Hello, my name is Katrina Huff Lerman. Um, I live in Randolph, but we're representing an um, organization that we're part of called Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Go ahead. Okay, so as I was saying, um, it's, it's, it's glad that we all have similar ideas. Um, and we're also in Brock and, and Randolph, we're also having this huge census movement as well and had the opportunity to talk about the hard to um, find the, the, the hard communities to um, do the census in and what does that mean and, and some of the same work that we're doing here as well. So we're very passionate about this as um, it seems like um, Mr. Jeff, as Jeff mentioned. So we talked a little bit about the importance of being very personable um, and meeting people where they're at. You know, not expecting people to come to you. And I think in the past, that's a lot that has happened, expecting people to do what you want them to do. But if you want, instead of going to the people. So that might mean going to apartment buildings um, and setting up outside um, in the function room you know, and having snacks or having opportunities and activities, kids activities or whatever it takes for people to come and to those, um, uh, come out of their apartments and join you in the function room. Um, and another idea, we came up with a house party, you know, so house party slash 
um, block party. So maybe there's a community of a certain population um, of, uh, of, or a culture of folks and in that neighborhood, in that block, that's where we have a block party where people come out, we have food, we have entertainment, um, something to bring people out and entice them. And we have a, a number of tables with the mobile um, device there and giving people opportunity not to, not only to complete their senses, but to also have fun. Um, and and uh, reason to come out um, to complete their senses. Also, um, establishing relationships it is with um, leaders or organizers within those communities um, that that people trust that they would know that if Gwen is asking me to fill out this. Uh, census form or fill out this information, whatever it is, I don't believe because I know her, I have a relationship with her, that she would not have me filling out a paper that's going to allow someone to come into my house and take me out of here. So really developing these relationships, like I said, with um, members of these communities so that they can help promote these census parties that, again, that you're looking to have it in, in a nice, friendly environment um, so that um, people would be willing to be trusting of what it is that you're trying to have them do. Um, and, and, um, and another topic that we talked about that we think is ex extremely important is the education portion. Um, individuals and communities just don't realize the importance of the census and how the money will go back into the community. And, 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 and so how are we able to, how will we be able to give that information? And actually, I, I just thought of something as you were talking. Um, we have banners going throughout the town, and I thought that it might be interesting, we thought it would be interesting to do you know banners? Do you know if you complete the census, this amount of money might go back into your town? Do you know, um, each person is worth $2,500 if you complete the census. I mean, just do you know facts? You know, money will go into education, money will go back into so social security, money will go into all of these different items. Um, and, and we also thought about churches as well. Um, getting community leaders, getting pastors and priests all on board to have the opportunity to um, talk about the census and have, and you, t you talked about the barriers in, in the churches, but we were just taught, we just spoke of having an opportunity to have census material there, have the mobile device, and while people are, before they leave church, maybe having food or some sort of snacks, and they complete the census. Just last week at my church, it was, uh, they had Black History Month and everyone stayed back and had some food. And I thought, wow, this would have been a great time to also bring out census material. Also just having the uh, verbiage within the script that talks about the, the, the funding, again, so that people will have an understanding of why you want them to be able to um, fill out this um, paperwork. And again, thinking outside the box, definitely going into the the barber shops, that is an area mm -hmm. where people congregate. Um, apathetic people need their hair cut as well. <laughs> so to be able to just kind of think outside of the box and definitely about, um, again, if the um, bringing, bringing yourself out to the people and not expecting them to be able to come to you. Because if there is this level of distrust, if mm -hmm. there is this level of apathy, they're not going to be coming to you and just be willing to, to take that risk and think outside the box. Thank you. Okay, so these are pretty compatible ideas um, in terms of, of what we're talking about. It's not quite the two sides of the, the coin, but it's close to it. Um, so you know, focusing on the apathy side that this group was really talking about for a little bit, this group is really talking about finding people where they're going to be anyways and trying to turn that into a census opportunity. Um, and yeah, that solves the issue we had on this side of the room, which was 
you know, if individuals are apathetic, they're not going to show up to a census thing. They're going to show up to something else. Um, I'm going to share with you a solution that worked in Methuen um, that they're working on right now because uh, you kind of hinted at it. One of the things that Methuen suggested, because they have a similar problem where it's where people who are just disengaged and don't care and don't read their the mail from the city hall, don't read uh, messages from the government, hang up when the auto call comes in. Um, what they said was along your lines, which was going to the places where people have to go. So you know, you can't get your hair cut electronically and have that mailed to you. You can't. Yeah, there are certain services that you have to be in there for. Um, and then the social aspect of it is also that. Like if someone wants to go out for a drink or go out for a meal, they can't, you know, unless they're doing takeout, they're not, that's when they're being engaged with their community. So here comes the question. And, you know, we are, we are running out of time. So um, what you need to think about and you know we have these the contribution forms so write down suggestions for us um, what organizations and from what you two were suggesting what businesses are on that list um, because that might be the solution to the problem that you identified um, and that would be um, if we can get that business where people are going to go to be on board, then we can census message them while they're there. So go to all the barber shops, talk to the barbers, but we need to know which ones people go to. Um, the churches, going back to, because the suggestion for a block party, yeah, churches are perfect for social events and social organizations. So then the question becomes, what, a, what churches are the most viable for that is there someone in the room who can compel the pastor or the minister to say yes, because that's sometimes a challenge. And then, you know, since we have a city councilor, we're gonna throw this in that direction. Um, what can the city do for resources to support the church to do that? So take a few moments, think about these two ideas, these two challenges, um, and Pedro Ray and I will go around to each of the groups as well. Um, and just, you know, start thinking about where in Brockton we can capture those individuals so that we can then create a to-do list for the CCC and create a to-do list for Pedro um, here in Brockton. Um, and then what we could do is we could try to solve the problem that you identified and the solution you identified um, by bringing census messaging to those locations in some way. And then all it becomes is the CCC creating events in those locations. So take a few minutes, start thinking about that. Yeah. The Census Bureau? No. So that's a question for the mayor's office because um, we're not privy to the plans that the city has for that. All right, so take a few minutes. I'm going to come around to each group. They will as well. Let's see what we can think about, um, what we can come up with. This is, like I said, my favorite part, the start throwing people and organizations under the bus because they weren't here. Right. Yes. I have um, Counselor at Large, Mr. Rodriguez, is here with us in the building too. And um, to tell you the truth, he's the one who brought me along to um, fill this position. Because um, before that, I didn't really have an idea about the census, but he's so passionate about it, so that I just want him to just say a few words, and then we can close it out. Well, thank, thank you very much for uh, having me here tonight. You're absolutely right. I am passionate about the census. Um, and one of the things that I've always said, uh, I know the census folks keep talking about federal dollars, federal dollars, federal dollars coming into the community, but it's beyond that. It's not just the federal dollars. Anytime you apply for a grant when you're an organization in this community, the first thing they think want to know is how many people live in your community. And they don't care, they don't care that you can tell them that there's 100 million people living in your community. They want to know what does the census say. So it's not about what my opinion is based on what the needs of the communities are or how many people exist in the communities. What does the census say? So it's not just the federal dollars. Sometimes 
we hear people talking about putting way too much emphasis and where you have the individuals who sometimes say, well, I'm not applying for federal dollars, so that has nothing to do with me, when in fact you don't realize that, yeah, you're applying for a grant. I mean, I run one of the community-based organizations here that live off those grants, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, we applied for um, a grant to do some census work. Uh, in the beginning of this whole process, it was a $30,000 grant. They gave us $10,000. You know why? Because we're a small community. And $10,000, all you did was basically infuse it with some of the other personnel that you had to go out and talk about the census. Because we don't have the numbers that we, that we could have because we haven't done a very good job with the census. So it's not, again, I want to make sure that a lot of times the apathy comes with people thinking that, you know what, I'm not dealing with the census government, I'm not dealing with the federal government, I'm not dealing with the Washington, therefore I don't have to do this. But it has not, sometimes it has very little to do with Washington. It has a lot more to do with the local um, uh, organizations that re rely on those numbers. Um, we were just talking with Jimmy in the back, and one of the things that we were talking about is that if you sit down and think about it, uh, this city is probably over 100 and probably close to 120,000 people. Because if you look at Lowell, Massachusetts, Lowell is a city basically with the same types of demographics that Brockton is. Uh, Lowell has 15,600 and something students in their public school system, but they're in the books for 108,000 people. How in God's name is Brockton with almost 18,000 kids in the public school system at 93,000 people? How's that possible? Or 94,000 people? Because we, in the last few years of the census, have not done a very good job at this because we haven't called it a community emergency. And to me, this is a community emergency when we are basically taking monies that could be coming to our community and throw it in the trash, because that's exactly what we're doing by not counting the people in this community, we're throwing that money away. And it's a community emergency. If you found out that uh, an elected official was uh, misusing uh, two, three, four million dollars a year, chances are you'd call that person to the carpet to know what the heck is going on with the use of, of those funds. And this is exactly what we're doing. Every year, we're throwing away millions of dollars that could be used in the city because we didn't do a very good job in counting people going back decades ago. So I think this is a community emergency. And this is why I was telling John uh, from the mayor's office a few minutes ago that when those dates show up, we need to use reverse 911 to let people know that the census are coming out. We need to use whatever the school department uses to notify us whenever there's a, you know, their kids are staying after school for this, kids staying after school for that. You know what? We need to notify them so that they know that the census are coming out. We need to use every single billing that comes out of the city with some census information in it. We need to use bumper stickers on police cars, fire trucks, whatever that belongs to this community, whatever belongs to the city to do that. And you know what? If we violate some rules and regs, we can deal with this over the summer. You know, let's deal with this beyond the census. Because I think it's a community emergency, and if this was a true emergency, if there was a, an emergency in the community, I'm sure everybody would kind of join up and deal with the emergency that we're talking about. So to me, this is a community emergency, and we need to act like it's a community emergency for us all to bend together and come up with a response so we can get our numbers counted. This community cannot afford another 10 years of the, what we had done in the past. If we continue to do this, we are providing a great injustice to every single man, woman, and child that lives in this community. And shame on us for not doing that. And shame on us for not using the resources that we have at our disposal when it comes to uh, getting our people motivated to do this. I don't care what people say. You know, I don't trust government. I don't do this. You, can, you cannot trust the government in the summer. Right now, you need to trust what we're telling you. And what we're telling you is that we need your name and address and where you live so we can count you. you know? And I don't care if you live in one bedroom and there's 20 people living in that bedroom. You know what? You need to fill out that form and state as such. You know what? I will personally defend you. I'm, I'm sounding like Trump now, but I will personally defend you if that, if that, if that time comes that somebody decides to, uh, to, 
to call you to the, on the carpet for something else because it's that important to us. This community needs it and every single person in that city needs it. And I hope, I hope as we move forward that we're banding together as a community to do this because I'm telling you, it's sad that we are continuing to do this to the people in the city of Brockton. Thank you. Yes. Your evil little mind. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying. That's what I said. We're gonna have, we're gonna have. Yeah, yeah. It rings every single home. It rings every single cell phone that's attached to it, and that's what we're gonna do. And John, I think, from the mayor's office, actually has taken that on, and I'm sure Bob Sullivan is is behind this one one million percent. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this again. I don't care what laws or rules we're violating. This has nothing to do with the federal folks. This is us, and we need to do this because, but let them, let them, you know, let them, you know, let them complain about it or whatever, but we're going to do this because we need to do this. We need to do this more than anybody else. Uh, you know, Boston doesn't have to do it because Boston is doing well. Worcester doesn't have to do it because they're doing well. Springfield is doing the same thing. We need to do it because we're not doing as well as we should, or we could. And we have more needs in this area than they do. So it's up to us to do it. And if it means twisting some rules and regs or whatever to get it done, we're going to do it. You know, we're going to do it. And then, again, it's that whole thing with forgiveness. We'll ask for forgiveness after the fact. You know, but we need to do this to get that. Yep. I think we're going to do it. And I think if we all bend together, uh, I'm sure this is going to be a very successful campaign. And it's up to every single one of us and the folks that are watching us at home to, we're gonna be calling. You get used to it because we're gonna be calling. We're gonna be calling every day, we're gonna be calling every week until we get this stuff done. You know, we're gonna do it. And I have, I have, I'm convinced that we're gonna do it and I'm sure that I'm not gonna be the only one speaking about this. Go ahead, Eva, do your thing. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. And that's it, I guess we're gonna wrap it up. Um, we sense the urgency in his voice and that's why I wanted him to say a few words too. Because, um, like I said, he has that passion. So those of you at home that um, didn't feel it <laughs> because you weren't here, I hope you felt it at home. Um, and that's it. It's just be a leader. Let's be a leader of our uh, neighborhood, our streets. Let's be leaders in our homes and uh, within our families. And just uh, best message of the census. Um, let's join forces if you have ideas. I, every time we do this, I ask, please connect with me, contact me. My phone number is 617-908-8588. I am the, in the mayor's office. You can ask for Eva Andrade. I am the outreach coordinator for the census. If, um, if you have an idea and you can share with us, please do so. We need the community to come together and, um, and do this because it is an emergency. It's urgent. All right, thank you so much for being here tonight. And uh, we'll be announcing uh, more events soon. Uh, our next event is going to be April 1st, Census Day. We have a community event, a free event with food, um, raffles, events, um, activities for the kids at the new community center on Oak Street. Uh, it's going to be from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And then again on April 4th at 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, just so that we can have uh, computers available, uh, speakers of different languages uh, that serve the city of Brockton, and we'll have computers available for people to fill out their census. Um, like um, they said earlier, census um, paperwork is being mailed um, starting March 16, so March 20. Oh yes, 12, from the 12th to the 20th. Uh, it's, you're going to receive something in your mail, and in that paperwork is where there's a code for you to fill out your census online. Uh, so online is the fastest way. It's the first time they're offering it. It's this year. If you don't do it online, you can do it over the phone in 12 different languages, 13, English included. Um, if you don't do it, the census, they're going to just keep on uh, sending you reminders in the mail. Eventually, they'll send you a door knocker. And if you want to avoid the door knockers because of the fear that, you know, some people might have, 
uh, then you need to fill it out online and it's the fastest way. So again, my number is 617-908-8588 if anyone has questions or needs help with anything can contact me at the mayor's office. Thank you very much.